Hello and welcome to my video where you will learn how to tag a butterfly and why. I'd like to share my love of nature and my enthusiasm for community science by telling you about an exciting program called Monarch Watch. As some of you may know, monarchs make their way north in the spring and several months later they fly south again to overwinter in warmer places like Mexico. One of the craziest things about this epic journey is that butterflies don't live very long, so the monarchs that come back are not the ones that went north in the spring. In fact, the returning generation may be their great-great-grandchildren. How do we know this? Because scientists have been trying to track them, and this work is more urgent now than ever because like many insects, monarchs are affected by human activity. So the population is smaller than it used to be, and their complicated migration makes them especially vulnerable to habitat loss and climate change. But you and I can help wildlife by creating butterfly habitat. And by learning how to tag monarchs, we can also help the scientists who study them. So now that you know why to tag a butterfly, let's talk about how. I've only been doing this for a few years, but the first thing I learned is that monarchs are not that easy to capture. So if you want to tag butterflies, the first step is to find out where they hang out, like a public park or garden where they stop to feed, or better yet, lure them to your own yard by planting a butterfly oasis of native flowers that bloom while they're migrating. Perennial plants are best because they come back each year, and be sure to use pollinator favorites. Like this frost weed, which grows about nine feet tall and becomes a magnet for all kinds of pollinators. Or this beautiful blue mist flower that grows nicely in partial shade, like on the north side of my home, where many flowers would not survive. Another step that takes some planning is ordering the tags, you'll need to put in your request early because they may be sold out by the end of summer. I mark my calendar to purchase one set of 25 tags each spring. You'll receive your tagging kit and instructions when the returning generation is due to start coming through your area. That's August for Dallas, Texas. But you may need to wait a few more weeks before peak season. In Dallas, that's early October. While you can sometimes get lucky with the swing and swipe method, I'm going to share a more reliable technique that I learned from a friend. You'll have to sneak up on the butterfly while it's busy feeding. And if it doesn't take flight too soon, you can hold the tip of the net in your free hand and slowly approach from above. The butterfly will take flight at some point, and if there's room in your net, it will fly straight up. Then, when it's safely past the opening, you can twist the net and hold it closed to keep the butterfly from escaping. Handle the butterfly with care, of course, but they're not quite as fragile as they look. Pinch the wings together, down toward the body, where you can get a nice grip. I'm right-handed, so I like to hold the butterfly in my left. Then my right hand is free for recording data, taking pictures, and putting on the sticker. But first, let's make sure it's actually a monarch. You'll want to familiarize yourself with other orange butterflies, such as this queen, which is a beautiful close cousin of the monarch. And by the way, the wildflower.org website where I found this picture is an excellent resource for choosing native pollinator plants. Along with the tag number, you will record additional information such as the date and location and whether the monarch is male or female. To find that out, you'll need to open the wings and look at the bright orange dorsal side where the male has a pair of pouches that contain pheromones. You can see this one is female because there are no pouches. And this butterfly is male 
you can see the pouches right below each of my thumbs. The best place for the tag is on the lighter orange underside of the wing, on a part of the pattern called the discal cell, which is shaped like a mitten. The extra weight of the tiny tag in that location won't interfere with the rest of its journey. You will upload your data online when your tags are used up or when the weather turns cold and butterfly season is over. Then researchers will put your data together with reports from other volunteers across North America, and they will be able to compare this year's migration patterns against previous and future years. A few of the tagged butterflies may even be found by researchers at overwintering sites, which will give them even more information. If you ever capture a tagged butterfly or find a body with a tag on it, you can go online to report the location. You can even find out if any of your own butterflies have ever been recovered. Of course, that's a bit of a long shot unless you have tagged quite a few. Maybe that means you'd better get started soon. Thanks for joining me on this community science adventure. Happy planting and happy tagging.